Hello, in this lecture, we're going to talk about transaction rules as they relate to the accounting equation. In other words, we're going to look at rules for transactions when we're recording transactions in terms of the accounting equation. Later on, we'll be building on these rules when we get to debits and credits. We'll basically build on those rules. We'll start off with the accounting equation. When we're thinking about transactions, we're talking about the day-to-day -day transactions, what the accounting department normally does, meaning we pay the utility bill, we process when we get revenue. Those types of transactions will have these set of rules, first rule. At least two accounts will be affected for every transaction. So whatever we are recording, there will be at least two accounts affected. Now when we look at the accounting equation, we see assets, liabilities, and equity. Those aren't actual accounts, those are account types. Within those account types, we have the actual accounts. For example, assets, we have cash, accounts receivable, equipment. Those are types of accounts that are under the account type of assets. So those are asset type accounts. Then we have the liabilities. We have things like accounts payable, notes payable. Anything that says payable is basically going to be a liability. We're going to start off really just with accounts payable, and then we'll get on to more liabilities when we get to the accrual process. But accounts payable will be our major payable. And then within the equity section, we have capital, we have draws. Then we have the entire income statement, meaning income and expense. When we're thinking about the accounting equation, the entire income se section will be in the equity section of the accounting equation. We'll talk more about why that is in a later lecture. Rule two, accounting equation must remain in balance. So whatever transaction we have, there's going to be two accounts that are affected, rule one. And rule two means that assets equal liabilities plus equity, the accounting equation, must always remain in balance. For example, let's imagine that cash is going up. We're having some type of transaction. We don't know what the transaction is, but we know that cash is going up. What are the possible scenarios that could happen for the other half of this transaction? One option is that the other account has, the assets will have no change. It'll remain the same. And we can say that liabilities increases. We can say that we got cash. If cash goes up, one possibility is that liabilities on the other side of the equal sign increases. Why might that be? Well, maybe we got the cash because we got something like a loan from the bank and therefore we increase the liability as well. Under that scenario, then of course the equity section would have no change, remain the same, and therefore assets went up, liabilities went up, this side of the equal sign went up, this side of the equal sign went up, therefore we are still in balance. We can think of another scenario if we say that cash went up, what's the second thing, the second scenario that could have happened? We could say, well, how about assets on the second transaction or the second account of the transaction? No change. Liabilities, no change. We could say, how about equity goes up? That would mean that the left side equals the right side. When might that happen? Why would cash go up and then equity go up? Well, maybe we earn revenue. Revenue increasing the equity side of the section. That means that the assets went up on this side of the equal sign and equity went up on the other side of the equal sign. Assets equal liabilities plus equity remains in balance. Third option, what if assets uh, go up with cash and we have the last option being that assets also go down. Now this is kind of a strange option, meaning that we're having a transaction with two accounts. One account's going up, one account's going down. Why might that happen? Well, maybe we got cash from an IOU, which is accounts receivable. So the receivable goes down, cash goes up. We'll talk more about those types of transactions later. No change in liabilities, no change in equity. We'll see more examples of this, and really to understand this, we just got to go through examples of transactions over and over until we really understand how this format will work. Repetition is the key.